All right, to be mindful of time, I'm going to get started. Uh, some of you folks will be trickling in as I'm talking. I'm gonna put everything into the chat as well. Welcome to the College Essay Guy Virtual College Fair. We have some excellent panelists to share about their college or university with you. A few things I just wanna go over that are really important to make this uh, the best it can for you and as smooth as possible is to understand that our panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you have a question for any of them or all of them, please use that Q&A button at the top or bottom of your screen. That Q&A button, as you can see, um, there's a little picture of it there. That is gonna be the only way you can ask a question during this 45 minute session. But with that said, please pay attention to the chat. These folks will be putting contact information or other really pertinent information into that chat for you to jot down or to take down to personally reach out to them or to contact somebody to answer your questions. Uh, this is the last session for this particular fair, but there is always more in the future. And this recording is available at strivescan.com college essay guy. And I will put that into the chat as well. All right. With that said, we're going to kick it off with Northern Arizona. Hello, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are joining us from. My name is Tyler Siegler. I am an assistant director of admissions at Northern Arizona University. I always like to start out by giving a little bit of information about where we're located, not only because it's important that you know we're gonna be calling home and living for the next four or five years, but also because we are not the typical part of Arizona. When you generally think of Arizona, you generally think of a hot desert wasteland full of cactus. And that's true for like 90% of the state. We live in the other 10% of Arizona, the cool part of the state, quite literally. Uh, we live at 7,000 feet at the base of the San Francisco peaks and we get all four seasons. We are the only city in the state of Arizona to never hit 100 degrees. We are a three hour drive from 11 different national parks and monuments, the Grand Canyon being one of the most famous ones. Uh, we are actually close enough that you can actually drive to the Grand Canyon in the morning, watch the sunrise, then come back in time for your first class of the day. Uh, on campus, uh, we are located smack dab in the middle of Flagstaff. About 40% of our students come from outside the state of Arizona and they do come from all 50 states. We are both a first gen forward and a Hispanic serving institution, something that we are exceptionally proud of. Division one school playing in the Big Sky Conference, more than 400 different clubs and organizations uh, for students to consider joining and 23 different residence halls on campus, 12 of which are for our freshman students. Living on campus your first year is not required, but is strongly recommended and nearly 90% of our freshmen do so. Uh, we are the smallest public university in the state of Arizona, but we are not a small university. We still have over 21,000 students on our campus and the city of Flagstaff itself is an additional 75,000 people. There are about 100 different majors for students to choose from. I am not going to go through all 100, uh, both because it would be tediously boring and we definitely don't have time in a six by six. At the same time, though, please note that about a third of our students do come in as what we call exploratory or undecided, undeclared. Does not put students behind, but rather gives you the opportunity to explore various majors that may be of interest to you and then declare by the end of your second year with most of our exploratory students declaring within one semester. Every single major on campus, with one exception, music education is designed to be completed in four years. Music education is a four and a half year long program, but we will extend your scholarships and financial aid uh, if you are a music ed student. Northern Arizona University is a rolling admissions university, which means lots of different things. Uh, some of those though include that our application deadline, not until May 1st of your senior year, Please don't wait until May 1st of your senior year to apply, um, but you can. I strongly recommend that you apply sometime in the fall semester of your senior year in order to ensure that you do not miss any other priority dates or deadlines. Uh, the other part of being a rolling admission university that's important to understand is that we never compare your application against anybody else's application. We compare it against the standards that we've set forth, and if you meet those standards, you're admitted. We do not require an essay, we do not require letters of recommendation, and we are test score optional. 
We were actually test score optional for about eight years before COVID hit, but because of COVID, fewer students than ever are sending us those scores. What we are looking for in the admissions process is how well you do in what we call your core courses, uh, which there are 14 that you see listed on the screen there. Again, test scores are not required for admissions purposes, neither for scholarship purposes. If you choose to send us those test scores, they can help you, but they'll never hurt you. Being a public university, we do have a couple different pricing structures, and these are based primarily on what state you call home. You can see those tuition rates there. Those are for the 22-23 school year. And while tuition is the single largest expense of college, it's not the only expense. So we do want you to be aware of those other estimated costs uh, that you should consider as well, including a housing, meal plan, books and supplies, and miscellaneous fees. Your application to the university actually doubles as your scholarship application. Uh, what will happen is you'll hopefully get your admissions letter in the mail that says, congratulations, welcome to Northern Arizona University. And about two weeks later, you'll get your scholarship letter. If you are joining us today and you're from the state of Arizona, here are those scholarship levels for you. Uh, these, this GPA is based on your core GPA, so just the GPA in those 14 core courses, not your elective courses. So the GPA that we calculate for you could be slightly different than the GPA that's currently showing up on your transcript. Scholarships from Arizona students range anywhere from $2,500 to a full tuition scholarship. If you are joining us today from outside the state of Arizona, either from a WUI state or a non WUI state, you too are eligible for additional scholarships. At NAU, WUI is automatic. If you're from a WUI state or territory and admitted, you'll automatically receive that tuition discount. And depending on your GPA, you could get the opportunity blue or gold scholarship on top of your WUI tuition discount. So those the awards can be stacked. For our true out-of-state non-WUI students, uh, you too have scholarship opportunities ranging from $9,000 to $11,000 per year. Uh, I will throw my contact information in the chat as well, but I also recommend that you check us out on social media if that's something that interests you. Uh, our Instagram stories are, I think, especially useful and interesting. Thank you so much for your time. I will now throw it to Pacific University, Oregon. All right, Tyler did it. Pacific uh, University, Oregon, you're up. And I'm on mute. You'd think after a couple of years, we'd all have this figured out. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Derek Nagley. I am one of the associate directors here at Pacific University. And as our name implies, we are a small private school up in northwest uh, part of the country in the state of Oregon. So we're in a small town called Forest Grove, and we're a small university there with about 1,900 undergraduate students and about 2,000 grad students. But most of you don't know where Forest Grove is. So we're about a 30 minute drive from Portland. So you're able to fly into Portland International Airport, one of the top airports in the US, and be able to use mass transportation to get out to our campus. But we're just far enough outside the city to actually enjoy the beautiful scenery you see behind me that makes the Northwest the adventure that it is. You can be sitting on the Oregon coast in an hour, sitting on Mount Hood in two hours, but still being close enough to Portland and the Silicon Forest and the huge companies that are there for those students to be able to get those benefits as well. And when you come to Pacific, you're going to apply to Pacific. You don't have to apply to a specific school or an honors college because we're going to bring you in as a student and be able to get the opportunity to study at Pacific. We offer over 75 different majors, minors, and programs. We're best known for the pre-health professions, optometry, physical therapy, but also we have regionally and nationally ranked creative writing, education, and business programs, brand new, brand new programs in sports leadership and management, sports communication, and outdoor leadership. And you can come in undecided and still be on track to graduate within four years. So you don't have to know exactly what you want to study when you come in. And as I just mentioned, no matter what you study, you're going to be treated as if you're an honors student. You don't have to apply into a different program to get those benefits. But instead, we are able to offer all of our students small classes, an average of 20, 19 to 20 students. Our biggest lecture hall only seats about 60. Every single class at Pacific is taught by full professors. So you're not learning from a TA or a grad student, but you're learning from a professor who is there to teach you. And they're in that classroom with you. 
And most importantly, we have our four-year graduation guarantee so that you can come in, even if you come in undecided, and be able to get that track and stay on track and graduate from Pacific in four years. And at the end of those four years, it's not a good luck handshake and just kind of pushing you out the door. But as the top private research university in the Pacific Northwest, our students are actually ready to go into the workforce. They're starting job shadowing internships and research freshman and sophomore year and continuing that for all four years while they're at Pacific. So at the end of those four years, you can see 93% of our graduates are in graduate school, in a job, or on a career path. And that's really impressive for our students to be able to do that across all of the different programs that are available to them. But when you're here, we also want to set you aside time to enjoy all those other talents, affinities, groups that you have in high school that you want to keep building on. And so all of our students are able to, regardless of what major they're thinking about studying, be part of our over 70 different clubs, organizations, and groups on campus, ranging everywhere from um, opportunities to join in different affinity backgrounds, all the way over to learning something new like joining the Hawaii Club and performing in the largest luau on the mainland US. Or that might mean being part of the performing arts groups, where you can sing, dance, and act in the plays without having to major or minor in those programs, or being part of our 24 varsity, 20 intramural, or 10 club sports. Our students are really active. They involve an average of three different clubs and groups while they're here, and we want you to be while you're here as well. We also want you to take that education outside of the classroom in more than just that internship setting. So that might mean exploring the Pacific Northwest with the Outdoor Pursuits Office and taking trips or getting the outdoor leadership degree, studying abroad, which over 50% of our students at Pacific will study outside of Oregon while they're a student here, or they're in a full semester or year abroad class, or in one of those two to three week travel classes with a professor in a foreign country or a different part of the US. And some of that might mean giving back through community service here in the Forest Grove area, or taking one of those travel classes, traveling to a different part of the world, learning a subject while you're there, and giving back as part of your education. And for all of those of you looking at coming to Pacific, our application is open pretty much year round. We use the common application, so you're going to be able to apply online. We are going to ask for an official transcript, a recommendation from a teacher or a counselor to fill out that application, and then we are test optional. And what that means at Pacific is if you send in test scores, they can only benefit you. You can still be admitted and receive our highest merit scholarship without sending them in, but they can be part of that academic profile while you're looking at Pacific. The other thing to know when we're looking at applications is that we have no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarships, which means all of our students are being looked at based on their academic success and the talents they're bringing to Pacific, not on how you compare it to different parts of the country. So with over 50% of our students coming from outside of Oregon, there's a huge opportunity to earn merit scholarships of up to $27,000 a year, special interest and talent awards for music, dance, and theater. And for those of you who are now excited about Pacific and want to come learn more about the school, you're able to come in the fall and take part in one of our senior preview scholarship days on campus or one of the virtual ones as well to get a chance to visit campus, talk with professors, meet current students, and earn an additional $1,000 a year in scholarship on top of that. So with over 99% of our students receiving financial aid, Pacific is a very affordable out-of-state option or an in-state option if you're looking from Pacific today. We want you to have that opportunity to come to Pacific and afford that education while you're here. This is how you can contact our entire office and learn more about our opportunities, as well as check out some of our social media hubs. And I will put my personal contact information into the chat as well, so that you can reach out to me directly if you do have any additional questions. But thank you all so much for listening. And I wish you the best of luck with the evening. All right, thank you so much. Next up, we have Western Washington University. Hey there, everyone. My name is Julia Ide. I'm an admissions counselor at Western Washington University. Let me get this slideshow going. There we go. All right, and so Western is located in Bellingham, Washington. And if you're not too familiar with us, we are in the very northwest corner of Washington. A fun fact actually about Western is we are the northernmost uh, university in the lower 48 states. Western is really a wonderful place to live and learn. Bellingham is the city that we're in. It's a population of about 90,000. So whether you're coming from a big city or a small town, Bellingham kind of is that Goldilocks zone of just right, where there's a lot to do in town. There's a lot on campus or in the surrounding areas, but it's not overwhelming, not a big city. It's still pretty quiet for your studying. 
Western is a mid-sized school. We have about 16,000 students and 95% of those students are undergraduate students coming in to earn their bachelor's degree. Why I include that number is that as potential undergraduate students, it does benefit you to be at an undergraduate focused university. We have a smaller average class size, about 27. 99% of our classes are taught by professors, not graduate students. So you really are getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction time with your professors. You can go and ask about their research, potentially get involved in their research, uh, talk to them about questions related to coursework or just go chat with them during office hours. So we wanna make sure that we're providing those opportunities. And one of the good things about being a mid-sized school is we do have the research internships that come with larger schools, but on a smaller scale. So you're able to access research and access your faculty. And we have more than 175 majors across our seven colleges. Some things that we're really well known for are uh, our College of the Environment. That was actually one of the first environmental colleges to be established in the United States. So this is something that we've prioritized for some time. In Washington, especially, we are really known for our Woodring College of Education. We um, are one of the top producers of teachers in Washington State, so we're really proud of that. And then last there on that list of colleges is Fairhaven College of Interdisciplinary Studies. And Fairhaven stands out because within that college, you have the opportunity to design your own major. So if you have interests that lie in the intersections of multiple disciplines and the programs we have just aren't the right fit for you, you can design your own degree program. So you're able to look at all of the classes we have at the university and choose your classes, build your curriculum so that your degree is really tailored to your interests. Because we want to make sure that you're finding that program that will be the right fit that will best prepare you for what you want to do after Western. Like I said, we have more than 175 majors. It'll be a very long PowerPoint if I listed them all. So I will put a link in the chat to our majors guide. I really encourage you to just go explore and see what's out there. You might find some programs that look really interesting. We also wanna make sure that you have opportunities to build your community on campus. It can feel a bit scary going away to college. Maybe this is the first time you're living on your own or you don't know many people at Western. We wanna make sure that we are making the university smaller so that you can find your support systems. One great way to do that is through clubs. We have more than 250 different clubs on campus, ranging from academic based like chemistry club, psychology club. There's the skiing and snowboarding club. As you can see from that picture there, we are very close to the mountains. Mount Baker is about 60 minutes to the east of campus, and that's where you'll find all of your winter sports, uh, skiing, snowboarding, hiking. In the south of campus in the Chuckanut Mountains is where you'll find mountain biking, rock climbing, and then we're also right on the bay. Bellingham Bay is about one mile to the west of campus, and we also have a couple lakes around. So if you like any kind of outdoor activity, there's a good chance Bellingham has it, and we really are an outdoor lover's paradise. There's tons of ways to get outside, and our outdoor center and Lakewood Boathouse are there just to facilitate that and make it easier for you. We have the Lakewood Boathouse over on Lake Whatcom. It's about a 12 minute drive from campus. And this is where you can go to take a sailing class, rent out kayaks, and then the outdoor center is on campus. You can go borrow equipment like snowshoes, a mountain bike, uh, skis, and you can also sign up for trips led by outdoor center staff. So if you're not familiar with these activities, you can learn how it's done and take advantage of this really incredible area that we're in. If that's not quite your style though, there's plenty to do on campus through those clubs, athletics and intramurals. We are a division two school. And we do have a very strong study abroad program. So that whether you wanna go see some amazing places near campus in the, um, that picture for example, is in the North Cascades about two hours from campus, whether you're wanting to study abroad and explore different parts of the world, whether it's volunteering in our community, there's those opportunities for you to expand upon your education and make sure that you're really doing those things that matter most to you. Next year, we have a bit of info about some of our resource and outreach programs, Counseling Center and Career Services Center. And I do want to emphasize, no matter what school you go to, there is no one formula to a successful college experience. And the resources that you need to succeed will be different from what the student next to you needs. And that's okay. So whatever school you end up at, please take advantage of those resources. We have our Academic Advising Center, our Tutoring Center, Counseling, Career Services. So whether you need some counseling support, whether you need tech help and are having trouble with your laptop or career services and you're planning for your career, take advantage of all of those resources. They're there to serve you. A bit of info about our application. So we are an online application. Uh, we require a, <clears throat> excuse me, we ask that you send us your transcripts. These don't need to be official. So if you have a copy, you can download them and send them into us. And we are a test optional school. So if you have taken the SAT, ACT, you're welcome to send those test scores in. 
we use a holistic method of application review at Western. So we do look at what classes you've taken. We look at your grades, uh, GPA, but that's not the sole focus of our review. We want to look for students that are prepared to be successful at Western and students that will thrive in our community. So you can really show that through the activity list and essay. Personally, as someone who reads applications, I really think the essay is one of the most important pieces because it tells us why Western should be excited to have you as a student. So it's your chance to talk about yourself and you can even brag a little. Getting close to time, so I want to wrap up with some info about scholarships and cost of, of attendance and Western is a WUI school, so we do participate in the Western undergraduate exchange. When you apply to Western, your application doubles for both our admissions and scholarships, so we'll automatically review you for those. No extra steps. We know you have a lot going on in your senior year, so we want to keep that nice and easy. When you apply, you'll be reviewed for our merit-based scholarships, and then we also have awards for involvement in multiculturalism and diversity in your community, leadership, as well as some distinguished scholars programs. So keep an eye on the mail. We will notify you after you're admitted. I want to leave off with our contact information here. We're here to be a resource to you as you explore Western and take these next steps. So please feel free to reach out to us. I'm going to drop some info in the chat where you can explore more Bellingham, take a virtual tour of campus, and connect and sign up for more info. So let us know what we can do and how we can make this process easier for you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Next up, we have FIDM. Thank you. Thank you, Julia and our other presenters. Um, my name is Megan Sterling. I represent FITM and FITM actually stands for Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. And um, we are located in Los Angeles. And we're a smaller college. We have approximately um, 3000 students that go to FITM. So your class size is quite small. It's about one to 20 teacher student ratio. And we really feel at FITM that your college experience should be rigorous, exciting, challenging, but most importantly, transformative and empower you to really begin a satisfying, successful career that suits your passions. Um, we are accredited, of course, we are specialized, we are a private college um, in downtown Los Angeles. If you've ever been to Los Angeles, we're about four blocks from um, the Staples Center. We're right in the heart of where the industry is. We offer associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, as well as an MBA. We prepare students for careers in the fashion, creative business, interior design, digital arts, and the entertainment industry. So from the moment a student begins classes at FITM, they will experience education from world-class faculty. Our faculty prepare students to launch their career by providing a supportive, creative, and a professional environment from which to learn practical skills. Work experience goes hand in hand with the project-based curriculum as students are encouraged to intern in over 80% of the programs that we have. And that means working in the industry in order to grow their network and really to gain that real world experience to be successful. So from entertainment to tech to action sports, streetwear, design, and lifestyle, California is the fifth largest economy in the world and has some of the most creative and entrepreneurial thinkers. Our industry partnerships are with some of the world's most recognizable and influential brands. FITM students generate innovative design and business solutions for top brands, giving students the opportunity to collaborate with companies and build their portfolio of work. Many of these companies go on to actually hire our students after their internship. So from the first day of class, students begin to integrate into a network that includes 70,000 influential alumni. We also have a dedicated career center staff that offers a variety of services for students and alumni throughout their entire industry career. So once you've left FITM, you can still come back and use those services. We host job fairs, we have on-campus recruiting, we have a multitude of networking events and promoting FITM talent and creating a space for student and alumni to continue to grow their important industry connections. 
Fitum also understands that creative minds are important in the world of business and business knowledge is crucial to the creative mind. So we don't want you to be a starving artist. We believe that students should study the design of business and the business of design to become fully professionalized and prepared to enter their chosen field upon graduation. We have over 20 plus majors to choose from and specialize in. We give our students the power and the freedom to design a college experience that suits their passion and their career goals. So what does that mean? That means after your first two years, we actually sit down, we reevaluate where you're at and make sure that the path that you have chosen is correct um, and that you're happy that this is what you thought your college experience would, would be. We have stackable degrees all the way from the AA all the way through to the MBA. So you create your own personalized design path based on who they are and who they want to become. So the admissions process involves a couple of steps. We have, of course, the application. We have the essay. We also have a portfolio requirement. We are part of National Portfolio Society, um, and we do some pre-screening of portfolios. Don't worry if you don't have a portfolio, especially if you're thinking of going into a business major, um, that there will be an additional project that um, we will give you to do prior to submitting. Um, we also have ongoing ed admissions as well. And I'd like to show you a short video of what it's like to attend FITM. FITM to me means creative opportunity and success. Like I can look at a brand or a company, I can decipher their you advertising. You can see the video, just we can hear it, but I don't see it. it. Okay, we'll just keep going on here and I'll put the link for the video in the chat. Um, I'd like to invite all of you to connect with us, visit one of our camp campus, campus, either in person or virtually to see if FITM is the right fit for you. So from open house, um, campus tours to summer programs, we have um, virtual lecture series, classroom presentations, um, Lots of ways to get an inside look at what FITM is about. We also have a variety of scholarships for students from um, DECA to FCCLA, um, National um, Portfolio. Um, we also sponsor fashion clubs at the community college level and the high school level for students who are interested. And of course, you can follow us on social media and um, get more information. So let your story begin here. Um, I hope the information I provided today, you can see why FITM is one of the top 10 graphic design schools, according to College Magazine. It's also one of the top 10 sustainable fashion schools in the world by University Network and why we have been driving innovation for over 50 years. So um, connect with us. I will put all of this into the chat for you. Um, to get more information. And finally, I know I'm like 10 seconds over. We have a summer program coming up at the end of June where you can really get a taste of what FITM is about on both the business and the design side called Two Days of Fashion. So come visit us. We'd love to um, meet you and learn a little bit more about your journey. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up we have University of British Columbia. Thank you so much, Christy. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, I think it should be good now. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Emma Hurlbert and I'm an associate recruiter and advisor at the University of British Columbia. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And today I'll be telling you a little bit more information about UBC in terms of our two, uh, our two stunning campuses, our academic excellence and our opportunities for student involvement so that you can start to determine whether UBC might be the right fit for you. Now, UBC is a public research university in Canada, in British Columbia, and out of over 25,000 universities worldwide, we are consistently ranked among the top 40 research universities in the world and in the top three universities in Canada. Now, as a student, this means that your professors are also leading researchers in their fields and they're actively conducting cutting edge research on both of our campuses, which you have the opportunity to be involved in. 
UBC has also been ranked as the most international university in North America. We have over 18,000 international students that come from 166 different countries. So this means not only will you have the opportunity to learn from your amazing professors, but also your peers, and you'll graduate with a truly global perspective. As I mentioned, we have two campuses. UBC's Vancouver campus is located in the city of Vancouver, and our Okanagan campus is located in the city of Kelowna in the larger Okanagan Valley region where, uh, where the campus gets its name. The campuses are about a four hour drive or a one hour flight apart. So you'll apply to and take all of your classes at one campus or the other. And regardless of which campus you attend, you'll graduate with the same UBC degree that is recognized worldwide, and you'll be guaranteed housing during your first year on both campuses as well. Our Vancouver campus is located in the vibrant multicultural city of Vancouver, located on the Pacific coast and surrounded by picturesque mountains and forests. The campus is about 20 minutes from the downtown core and is located on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. This campus is home to about 45,000 undergraduate students and it's a large self-contained campus community. So this is quite a large university campus. We have state-of-the-art faci uh, facilities, sports fields, gyms, museums, restaurants, and theaters. So there's always something to keep you busy, both on campus and definitely in the city as well. Now, if you would prefer a mid-sized campus or a mid-sized city to live in, UBC's Okanagan campus in the city of Kelowna may be a good option for you. Kelowna is a mid-sized but fast-growing city, and it's a very young city. Um, there's a booming tech industry there and a very entrepreneurial spirit to the city. And the campus is situated within the territory of the Silks Okanagan Nation. This campus has about 10,000 undergraduate students and is known for small class sizes and unique campus city partnerships. And there are currently over a thousand research projects currently underway at this campus, which makes it really easy to plug into a close knit community. In terms of academics, UBC offers over 260 undergraduate majors. We have popular degrees in the liberal arts, business and STEM fields. And we also have some very unique and niche programs in sustainability, applied biology, kinesiology, forestry, food, nutrition and health and more. So I encourage you to visit our website and explore the programs that we offer. Now, when you apply to UBC, you won't apply completely undeclared, but you also won't apply directly into your major. You will apply into a general degree program, such as the ones that I've listed on the screen here. And then at the end of your first or second year is generally when you'll specialize into your major. So at the time of the application, you can choose a first and second choice of general degree program and campus. So that might be two different programs on the same campus or the same program on both campuses. It's totally up to you, your choice. And let's talk a little bit about costs because it's really important for you to consider. So keep in mind, these are the estimated costs for international students. If you happen to be a Canadian citizen, then your tuition will be domestic. So you can he see here I've listed the tuition in Canadian and US dollars, and it's fairly similar to what you might expect to pay out of state or a fair bit less than what you would generally pay at a private college. However, this is a really large investment, and we have some scholarships to help offset these costs for exceptional students. Now, because we are a Canadian public university, we don't have financial aid in the same way as some US institutions, but we do have entrance awards both merit and need-based, and American students can, US, can use US student loans at UBC. So if you think that UBC might be the right fit for you, you'll want to start by thinking about what degree programs you're interested in, which campus sounds like it would be a better fit, and then you can begin your application this fall and submit it anytime before January 15th of 2023. After you submit your application, then you'll be asked to submit uh, supporting documents such as your transcript after that, and then you'll receive your decision um, later on in the spring. Please feel free to connect with us anytime on the social media. We're very active and we do have advisors going through the social media regularly. You can email me individually and as well, you can sign up 
for a campus tour virtual or in person for either or both of our campuses on our website. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. So this is the time where I have everyone come back on camera and we're going to go in the same order that you presented. And the question, I'm gonna put it in the chat as well so everyone can see it, is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Perfect. Well, thank you for that question. I appreciate being going first because someone always steals my answer. Uh, but my um, advice would be to, to reach out to your admissions counselor at whatever school or schools you're looking at. I know it's the most cliche piece of advice you can get, but we know the ins and outs. We can answer your questions with 100% certainty. And believe it or not, we're not even fighting with each other. We are truly going to help you find the right fit for you. I think all of us can say that we do occasionally work with students and upon talking with them, we're like, we're not a good fit for you, but you should talk to so-and-so over here. We're going to help you find the right university for you. Hopefully it's the university that we work for, um, but in the end, we want you to find the right uh, choice best fit for you. And one piece of advice I always like to share is for students not to focus on one word. So colleges have this really annoying habit where we will rename anything we possibly can just so we can sound unique whether it's a major or a scholarship, a program we offer. And so if you're searching for something because that's what you've heard it called or that's what your folks called it when they went to college, it could change names just between the five schools you saw here today. So it's just as simple as going onto Google and typing in what else is this major called and you're gonna find some amazing opportunities you would have missed out just by calling it one specific word. And my advice is to write down a list of things you want in a school. It's sort of like house hunting where, oh, I really want to have this, but if the school doesn't have a new soccer field, that's okay, even though I'd like it. So it'll help you to figure out what's important to you. What are you going to prioritize in your college search? So then you can apply that to the schools you're looking at and figure out, will they really fit your needs and what you're looking for? Well, you took the words right out of my mouth, Julia. But because I say the same thing, explore, make a list. What are your must haves? What are your kind of uh, things that, oh, I'm a little on the fence about that. It goes beyond the major. It goes to the environment that you're gonna live in, the size of the school. Um, some students really want a sports atmosphere. What is that for you? And then once you've narrowed down that list, go and visit those schools and you'll know when you've hit the right one, which one is the fit for you. And like Tyler said, we don't, compete at all because we want you to be happy because then you're going to be successful. Mine is a little bit similar. I would advise to think about fit in terms of the university's culture, campus life, and also whether your values match up with the university's values. So finding somewhere where you'll be happy and actually thrive is going to make you so much more successful than attending university that just has the highest ranking or looks best in the numbers, but where you'll actually feel at home and feel comfortable. So prioritize fit and getting to know the universities that you're actually choosing to apply to because then you'll really set yourself up for success, both in your academics and in your personal life as well. And maybe a little bit more on a practical note, make a spreadsheet where you can organize all your questions, your impressions, like your first impressions of the universities, things you want to know about them, as well as the deadlines, because many universities do have different deadlines for applications, for scholarships, for documents, all those things. So it's best to stay organized rather than scrambling around at the last minute. All great advice. Um, we have the time for one more question. And so same order that we just went, could you answer what is one thing that you want students to remember about your school? What is one thing, same order? Oh, that's not a question I, I get a lot and then trying to come down to one thing. Now I don't wish I was first. Um, I, I guess I would, I always think of, I like to think of NAU anyway as kind of a Goldilocks university. It's not too small, it's not too big, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's not a college town, it's not in a giant city, it really is kind of this perfect uh, mashup. But in the end, it is going to come down to fit. Um, I know Emma talked about different kinds of fit. I do something similar talking about how you need to find academic fit, social fit and financial fit. You need those three legs to balance out as much as possible. So in the end, it's always gonna depend on fit. 
Well, if you're looking for that small private liberal arts school, but you're looking for one where you can stay busy, so you can do those four or five or six things you really like doing in high school and want to keep doing all of them and not just have to focus in on one, Pacific is going to be a really, really good fit for that. And also, if you have to remember one thing, we're home to the world's tallest barbershop pole. So you can come to school at Pacific and be at home to the world's tallest barbershop pole. That's a good one. Um, one thing to remember about Western is our location. We're really lucky with the area that we're in, as well as the connections then that Bellingham provides to Seattle, up to Vancouver. We're in a really great space and um, just want you to remember that we're here for you and we're here to be a resource and make this process less scary and confusing. Um, the one thing I'd like you to remember about FITM is it's private and very specialized. And our alumni really tell the story, you know, with over 70,000 working um, in this really dynamic industry, we're in the heart of that industry being in downtown Los Angeles. So I think that is huge. You're going to start your second quarter working in the industry right along taking classes with our world class faculty. So it's that alumni that tell the story. One thing I'd like students to remember is the global nature of a UBC education. There are so many opportunities to connect with peers and professors from all over the world and take globally focused classes at UBC. In addition to studying abroad, completing cooperative education placements around the world, studying with UBC professors in international locations and conducting research abroad. So if you would like a global focus and get to know other places around the world, then UBC is definitely the place. And also we have our own beaches on campus. So don't forget about that. All right, very cool. <laughs> you all uh, gave a really, definitely something to remember. And these are things I also remember about all of your different uh, colleges and universities. So this is really cool. So appreciate you sharing all of that. Your advice is great. The piece about um, that makes your school special that, or that you want people to remember was also really great. Um, with that, I put some information into the chat. I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, same thing that I'm sharing my screen is what I put in the chat. Really just wanna thank you all for joining us. Our experts, our panelists, um, I, I believe it was Tyler that said, uh, reach out to us, so reach out to these folks. These are the experts. They really wanna guide you uh, and make sure that uh, you find the right fit for you. Um, so please take down that contact information out of the chat, or if you're watching this recording, um, snag it out of there too and contact these folks. When you leave quick survey, that helps us. Um, this is the last session for tonight. There's gonna be more sessions um, potentially through the summer, but definitely come fall as things start ramping up again. And a recording of this one and all of the other panels and uh, six by six formats that we've had tonight are found at strivescan.com forward slash college essay guy. Um, that is also in the chat. So with that, thank you again to our experts, our panelists. Best of luck to the students, the parents, the counselors, everyone that's attending and are watching um, and finding the right fit for you. Stay well, and I hope you have a fantastic night.